Welcome to Future Docs Podcast. My name is Pedro Mazzani. I'm the Chief Clinical Officer at AC Medical, a family physician, and also a co-host of Future Docs Podcast. And I'm your other co-host, Cody Fan, a Career Development Coordinator here at AC Medical. As always, we invite you to watch the video form of this podcast by visiting us on youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. Whether it's been days or weeks post residency interview, you want to be proactive and be creative in following up with residency programs. You want to find ways to be memorable. With thousands of applicants, a simple gesture might make all the difference. Today, we discuss some ideas on how to remain on your residency program's radar. You must consider each exchange of communication in any form between you and any member of the residency program part of your interview. So always be polite, thorough, and informative each time you speak with them. Dr. Mazzani. What are some creative ways that you suggest in how we reach out to residency programs? Thank you, Cody. Some creative ways to reach out to programs is, you know, quite fundamental. And some of those are as simple as reaching out and calling those programs. Now, probably the biggest pet peeve of residency candidates trying to call programs is that nobody picks up the phone or they have to leave message or messages or nobody replies back to their emails. And you have to re realize that there are, you know, one, two, five thousand, ten thousand 5,000, 10,000 other people probably thinking just like you are. So you have to be persistent, but not to a point where you're stalking the program. I would probably say that you have to make it your full-time job. And I would try to contact the program three, four times at different times of a week throughout one week until somebody picks up the phone. I wouldn't leave any messages. I think leaving one message is probably even too much because most of the programs will not even consider responding back to any messages from anybody who's interested in them because they already have a system in place, which is ERAS. And so I would call four or five times until somebody picks up the phone. Other creative ways of reaching out to the program is of course emailing, but on knowing who to email. And so if you look at the ERAS list of programs where you can search, you'll see most likely the program coordinators contact information and her email or his email. But if you go on to the same program's website on acgme.org, you'll probably even get the program director's contact information there as well. This is public information. And so you may use that and, you know, CC the program director as well. And, and reach out to them. Uh, other ways to reach out to the program is probably somebody that you know within the program. Now, we're not always aware of everybody that's in the program, and that's probably, it's a little bit tougher to find somebody who's connected with you and also cares enough to stand up for you. And you also want to make sure that if you do find somebody within the program to stand up for you and speak positively about you, that you're giving them all the tools, all the ammunition that they need to be able to defend you and to not look bad. You want to make them look good. So whoever you're using to, to put your best foot forward, give them everything that the program would require. That means great letters of recommendation and, and an ERAS application that's well put together, no grammatical errors and, and a personal statement that addresses all of your red flags. So those are some ways to reach out to programs, some creative ways. Okay. I do have two branching questions. So sticking with the theme now, if I am successful in making contact with the residency program, ha having called four to five times a week, what should I even say? <laughs> well, uh, if, uh, you know, if I'm a residency coordinator and I'm receiving a phone call from somebody who sounds desperate to get an interview, I probably want to end that call pretty fast because you don't really want your physician to be desperate. And that starts from residency. So just like you said initially, that every contact is imperative, is critical. So you got to be very careful in what you say. When you call them, you have to have a really good reason to contact the program. And it's got to be something that they care about, right? And so some good reasons to call the program is, you know, let's say that you've been put on a wait list and the program has just not contacted you back. But that's a really good follow-up phone call to make about, like, I'm still here and I'm, I'm available and I just want to kind of come back on your radar. So that's a good reason to contact the program. Another reason to contact the program is, let's say that you have a pending USMLE that you did not pass before you, before you applied to them. That's one other good reason. And, and, and you want to talk about that. Another thing that you want to possibly talk about is, let's say you finished a clinical rotation with uh, the same specialty and you got a letter of recommendation. You want to add that to your application. And it's just a, it's a talking point for, and with the program coordinator, 
I think another thing that we used to do in the past, which is kind of coming back again uh, as the pandemic starts to take whatever shape that it's taken now, but it's certainly not as bad as it was back in 2020, and uh, which is, you know, you being in town and, you know, wondering if there is any opportunities for a short-term observership at the program, most likely they're going to say no, but again, it's an opportunity for you to make your name known and and uh, some talking points uh, to speak about with the coordinator who picks up the call. And for post-interview communication, first off, do you recommend thank you notes? And if so, when should I send it? I'm a little bit more traditional. I think that thank you cards are really nice, especially if you get good handwriting. If your handwriting is not good, make sure that you pay somebody to go ahead and handwrite for you, uh, your cards or your thank you letters. You know, and then make it short. Don't don't make it long. And so you could you could do that. If you don't want to send, uh, you know, something tangible, then thank you email is fine. But just know that majority of emails may you know make it archived or not even looked at. So the other thing that you could do is you could contact the program coordinator and ask him what their post interview communication protocol protocol is. And so if you send it to the coordinator and have the coordinator distribute that out, that's another talking point between you and the coordinator. So I think that that's really good. It also shows that you have respect for the institutional policies and, and you're there to add to the organization and not to you know, increase mayhem. So that's what, I would, that's what I would do with thank you, cards and notes or emails. And one final question for today, taking the thank you notes a little bit further, can it be considered overstepping if, since we are in holiday season, to send a holiday greeting card, hey, just making sure that you're I'm on your radar? Is that something that you would suggest? I think that's a wonderful idea. And pick your holiday card very carefully because you, know, you may not know the religion of the individual that you're sending the card to. There's some really beautiful uh, holiday cards that may not have a Christmas tree on it, but it still feels very festive. Maybe it's got snow on it. Maybe, you know, just some sort of a festive card with, that is agnostic when it comes to religion. So pick those carefully. Just be cautious that not everybody is of a particular religion. Obviously, you know that, but uh, you'd be surprised uh, how many people that are not Caucasian are Christian and people from Middle East that are not Muslim. And so just choose the card wisely and just be mindful of that. This includes this Future Dogs podcast episode. If you're listening to the podcast, once again, we invite you to watch the video form on our YouTube channel by going to youtube.com forward slash AC Medical Org. There's a lot of ways that you can reach out to the programs and it's very easy to make the program really upset. And hopefully this episode gave you a little bit of an idea of what to do, but I really want to stress that to be cognizant of the responsibilities that the coordinator and the program directors have. So to reach out to them is one thing, but to also, you know, be looked at as a stalker, that's, that's something quite real as well. So if a program expresses to you in any way that they don't really want to speak with you, respect that because uh, you're not going to change their mind by calling them more or sending them more gifts or sending them additional cards. So we want people that are confident, that are respectful, that understand policies, but at the same time, they show an interest and you can show interest in very professional, you know, measured strategic ways. And so be very strategic in your approach and uh, don't be overzealous and don't oversell yourself. So hopefully with this, walking into the holidays, it's giving you a little bit of, a, of an ammunition. It gets your brain juices flowing and, and how do you stay on the program's radar without being picked off the radar? So thank you so much for listening and uh, coming to this episode of our podcast. If you have any questions, please send an email to podcast at acmedical.org or visit our website, acmedical.org. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, thank you for your time, Dr. Mazzani. And for our future docs, we will catch you next week. Thank you, Cody.